Hey, everyone. Hey, we're going to go straight to Suna. Oh, we're going to meet up with Kim, but he'll just be outside the he door. He should eh? just be here, yeah. Yay. Good morning. Love, Kim. Let's go. And we teleport. Suna. Yes. Yeah. Was that always there? Yes, I think yes. it was. I just not normally that zoomed in. <laughs> I was just like, but. I see now. Hey. Yes. What is it? Oh, okay, cool. That's great. Okay. We got a plus because we discussed fortress accident with the dice maker. Huh. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Deep breath, everybody. Mm. Easy. When our research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research, you mentioned earlier that it's not very it's not going very well. Maybe something I can help with. Mm. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in the church next to the boom boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old work. We have it! If you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Is this the filament you're looking for? <laughs> show the production no, sketch. That's oh. the production sketch you used stolen access without <laughs> authorization. <laughs> sh 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 I don't need it. In his defense, it was simply laying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Thank you, Cam. Okay, but still. What is an offsite copy and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She points to the going She's tube. making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You ah. just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Okay. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on site? Can we ask that question? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, not this again. It is not on site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. It'll be what's in the, it's in the, the fridge that we can't open. Oh, you reckon? I reckon. Basement? Sounds like it's technically <laughs> still right on right. site. And no. Taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. I mean... Isn't it related to space? Because it's the weird thing that's a... Anyway. We clear? I mean, not really, but we'll oh, carry on. Oh, she stares at you with pleading furious eyes. <sighs> she feels bad. She feels bad, right? This is clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself okay. numerous times. Okay, by your old workspace, do you mean the studio fortress accident in the doomed commercial area? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Actually, I've already been inside the doomed commercial area. Good. Then you might know the giant ah. ice bear fridge in the building cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. Good job. In the in the ice bear fridge? There's no there's no filament in there. We stored a body in here. <laughs> well let's give a look. Where exactly is the offsite in copy? The giant ice bear fridge. I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear. Do you reckon Kuno stole it? But You've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... <gasps> That's number two. I found a note from the ice bear fridge. It said the off-site copy has been moved to a safer place. Wait, a note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? Said the off-site copy had been taken to a nearby ice cream maker. The note was signed by someone named Sulisoif. Jawisa, of course. Our project lead, Suliswolf Javisa. God, he was always so hell bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. And feature creep. <laughs> in the valley of the heads. 
valley of ants amazing but that might be a good thing it might mean that it has a backup the backup wasn't damaged maybe like it would have made a difference the offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened that data loss was anomalous uh-huh and the heads i won't even get into the heads millions of them Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Oh, Thanks. we have to get with that fucking ice cream maker, yep. Valley of a thousand heads. You like the sound of that. I found the ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. <laughs> the deep valley in the fridge. I don't think we should say that. Uh, I mean, we could. Um, I found the ice cream maker, but I couldn't get it open. It's completely it's frozen. Ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or... I don't know. I can't remember whether we left it plugged in or not. Maker. Just think of something I think else. I might have turned it back on, maybe? The solution, I think we might have turned it back on. she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. Hmm. We just need a pry bar. Do you want to ask either of these questions? I want to ask the body one. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we put a dead body in that for us. Sorry, again. <laughs> Who's dead body? You know, we don't actually have to take the entire way. The lieutenant says, looking at you. Whose body is it? Don't worry. I put it there temporarily. It's all part of an official investigation. You put it there? You put a dead body inside the ice bear fridge. The investigation warranted it. It did! Yeah. Okay. Hey, we Very got experience. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me in the loop. <laughs> we would appreciate it if you kept this knowledge to yourself. <laughs> Poor kid. Who would I tell my mother? I don't have anyone to tell. And if I did, I wouldn't. I don't care. May as well say last one. Why can't you go get the film in yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. Uh -huh. Says I'm part of the curse. Wait, Whatever are you part of the curse? <laughs> of course not. Anyway, I don't have my keys anymore and she won't let me in. Why does she think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez, and people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. Uh. She thinks it emits elemental evil. <laughs> um. What if it does emit elemental evil? There are your eyes. It doesn't emit, it receives. You sound just like her. She started praying when she first saw my reign. Turn to higher powers. <sighs> I mean, I guess this is the closest thing they have to the internet. The, the radio computer. Coughs like he's amused. Once I came in one morning, only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. It looked like some seminine magic. Okay, great. I'll go look for it. Thanks. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind a radio computer with and hands oh. you what looks like an oversized primer. And here's my false multi tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the false one. It hurts a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kavalsund. Nice. Okay. Amazing. Let's go. I'm so keen. Tools. Yes. I'm gonna put this on, just in case we see- Whoa, it's fucking massive! Holy shit! Wow. <laughs> Amazing! I'm so keen to, um... To do this? Yeah. Yeah. We may need to turn the ice fridge off again. And then come back. But that's okay. And wait. That's yeah. okay. Uh... Ooh, and let's try the, um calling Alice again on the radio. Oh, yeah. That's been a weird whole thing, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, Let's try it first and then... This orange machine is dead still. It has a machine is unplugged. ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The okay. ice around it slowly melted. Uh, what's the top option? Turn the ice cream crank. <sighs> Why do we not have a... Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, mm, okay. like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. 
You'll Can never we become check our items? Physical instrument? An yeah, I actually think we have a negative two to physical instrument right now, so now is not a good time. Now is not a good time. We need to wait nine hours. Okay, that's fine. We will wait. But, but we can go to the workshop. We can go to the workshop and we can speak on the um, phone. Yes. Although, part of me is suspicious that is one of those... Do it. Um, no, I'm going I'm to do it, Inside, but... Um, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone... We, we established in between episodes that there's a the couple of things of that are... Precinct 57, how may I assist you? Um, still showing on our tasks list that we've done. Ah. So, anyway, did you find out more about the owner of the armoured boots? Still no word, I'm afraid, sir. I know it must be frustrating. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? And can we talk it's... to Sylvie again? Because I want to be like, you can come back, it's safe now. <laughs> Alright, right, yeah. Just a second, I'll be so. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? Hey Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh great. What else do you need, detective? Uh Hmm. We've Test Clash's this. story? But we've we must have asked this question. It wouldn't have been about Clash's story, but it would must have been that question because it's grayed out. It's grayed out, but let's ask it anyway. No. Is it you? Not me. Okay. Do you know who made the no, call? Sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Mm. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone. Seems like last year wasn't lying when she said it was her. Mm. This corroborates her story. Okay, well we she got some XP call. from that. She is of the fairest of them all. The ugliness of lies would never escape her oh lips. My gosh, drama. <sighs> um... Should we stop there? Yeah. Next yeah, question. Go on. Okay. I wanted to say something nice, but we don't have an option for that, so. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Anything Let's I go to Precinct 41 again. Okay. And 41st, yeah. Just a moment, officer. 10 4, come in, officer. Over. I'm happy to report I found my badge, Jules. 10 4, sir. Glad to hear that. I'll write down that there is no need to issue a new one to use then. Over. Nice. Cool. That's it? I guess so. 10 10, transmission completed. Standing by. Roger that. 10 10, over and out. Okay. Cool. We're good at life. <laughs> sort of. Not really. <laughs> uh, we got a skill point somehow during that process. I uh, don't know. Maybe we leveled up? Um, okay. Let's go into the secret workshop. Let's definitely do it while holding this gigantic tool. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Kim, we found a secret room. Was this like this before? Yeah, I feel like we look at it. Tomatoes are so thinly sliced, sliced you can see through them. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. No, no game. Thank you. Let's into the room. Hang on, I can't get in there because of where I'm standing. <sighs> Yay! Ooh, stuff. As Pimble says, Franco Franco Nigerian. The theme is horses and swords. Okay. This pinball is white Diora. The black, the back glass shows a female figure in mourning. A note, NB, the spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner. Mm -hmm, we found it, thank you. Oh, five bucks! Nice. Uh, I'm actually going to put a bag on, just in case there's tear in this mm. Um. Over there, in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. 
This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Kim, are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> the pinball machine. Gordy's Goats. A classic. Have oh, you played it? A little. Feels like a lot. Too much to play it again. Let's take a close look. Oh, is there a mini great. game? Oh. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get is it the still game on, in? Finger Boy. Those flippers are ready. Oh, yes. Link, let's read the text first. Yep. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The Mesk legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Amazing. Yeah. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. Okay. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. I love it. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with all the goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Insert coin. It takes a while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with three. relative ease. Nice. Go, go, finger boy. I'm glad we had the interfacing stuff on. I feel sorry for the goats. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Wait, what kind of guy was he then? The kind of a guy who uses the word who? savages a lot when recounting his travels. A masked nationalist. A racist mountaineer? I mean, most of them are. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, any mountaineers out there, no, but you know, not if you're the racist. old, um, the old, uh, what is it? Get the locals to do all the work and then say that you did it? Oh, yeah. A racist mountaineer? A huntsman, too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by a wall mounted hunting trophy <gasps> from every continent. That is not cool. He also hit his wife. Oh, that's extra not kids. cool. Other people's kids, too. Sometimes pets. Hateful little men. Mm. But you seem to be having fun. I'm pretty good at this. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board, and although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Yes. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity yes. presents itself. One of them gets through. Tiny hammer shatters something inside the machine. Oh! Something glass. Uh oh. The words pale rupture light <gasps> up on the speaker panel and the machine starts filling with a thick milky fog. What? Something's happening. Congratulations. This is where the game ends. It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. How many? There's so much fog, you can barely see anything. Some is actually leaking out of the machine, and one by one, your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. I feel so like the game ends with the pail taking everything over. Ooh. It's a pale rupture. Ah ha ha! This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. I feel like Kim's mad about this. Like, obviously, when he was a kid, this happened to him, and he was like, fucking bullshit, making it impossible to see. You're down to your last goat, oh. going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. Five I times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. 
I reckon don't do the top pump because reaction speed is often based on just getting it done. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure, but I feel like if we say it. Okay. Uh, if you want, if you want to do the top one, that's fine. Because I'm not sure. That's just my rationale. I'm gonna say it. Okay. Kim, it can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it okay. too. You will eventually make a mistake, and then it's all over. Rest what? Um. Reaction speed low. We're probably not gonna pass, but let's try. Oh, oh. You can't even see it. The last goat plummets into the fog with almost suicidal glee. Well, if we're gonna <laughs> give up, that's a failure anyway, right? So yeah, it goes nothing, try. finger boy. Hey, we still we still got to the end. We did. Motorway south. Oh. oh. Here we go. Tell us about it. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild pale yonder for an unimaginable distance, forgetting, forgetting until you can no longer remember anything. No cities, no mountains, no oceans, and finally, no vector. Nothing remains, a blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible, the motion of a human throat swallowing, and then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before, while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamrock. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. Mm. Mm. All intellect white checks are unlocked, and Inland Empire we get a plus one. Cool. What is that unlocked for us? That's a good question. Do we want to start another thought? We've still got one going. I know we can have... A... I kind of want to save these points for other things at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shall we see what checks opened up for us? Yeah. So they were intellect. intellect based. There might not have been many of them. Mm, what is this? Why has this got an exclamation mark? Maybe is just because the quest updated. Well, yeah. Um... Fucking this scroll is the most badly designed scroll in any history. Ah, the abandoned lorry. That's interesting. But that's physical instrument. We don't want to do any of these until. Yeah. Cool. So there weren't any. There weren't any. Mm. That's annoying. Unless this one at the top is conceptualization intellect based. Mm, I think it's its own thing. Backyard wall. I think it is just conceptualization. I think all of these blue ones, aren't they? Aren't they all intellect based? I thought they were all of these. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I think there's at least one that opened up. Yeah. That was already open, but we can't do it anyway. <laughs> this should have opened, but it hasn't for some reason. That's weird. But this one has, I'm pretty sure. That's new. All right, cool. Um, what else can we do in here? Let's go through this mysterious door. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your finger across the dust of the white Diorum machine. <laughs> Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white robed woman. What is White Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme, probably related to Messina during the Delorean Age. The history themes are the worst. I love that Kim's like this pinball the expert. The lieutenant grimaces looking at the machines. How about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some ball? We just, I mean, we just did some, but yeah. You can't fire them up. They are broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. He looks away. What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. What's that one there? It's a red check. Maybe we should ask him first. So this one like first? Yeah. 
Sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Kim. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. What about that other one, the Franco-Nigerian ball? Want to play that? No. All right, let's try it. Okay, uh, let's try and put some... Um, oh, we, we can't, can't get out of this one. No, no. Oh, boo. Our encyclopedia is so low. Mm -hmm. It's strange that he doesn't like pinball. Kim here is a Seolite. His people are incredibly dexterous, and they all love pinball. What the oh, fuck sort of thought is that encyclopedia? Oh, encyclopedia, what the fuck? Random racist comment. Didn't you guys, like, invent pinball? Us? Guys? Yeah. Stop. Stop. No matter, this is a failure. I'm failing and I'm going to stop. Okay. I don't like pinball because I had to learn to play it for an undercover job at a pinball ring. And it's a lame, boring, and unchallenging game. There. We can move on now. Okay. I feel like he just made that up. Yeah. Because he knows we wanted to hear Super. something. Tip top. This went pretty well, all things considered. Well, yes, all things considered. <sighs> Shit. Let's move on then. Ah, oh, dang. Uh, if you guys want to tell us in the comments this what we would have found out. It's dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open. Inviting you to step inside. Oh, Smells of nougat and sweat. Ugh. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, and it's just so enough room for two people to fit in. Let's go. Let's go. The maintenance card under the control panel reads: Last maintenance, 10th July, 88. Ooh, isn't it like the 40s or something now, or the 50s? Mm -hmm. I think it's the 50s, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a long time ago. Mm. It says the last maintenance was in 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. Yes, let's go. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to say? The future or a long time ago? Uh, long time ago. At the end of the last century. Look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm Absolutely. talking three, maybe four months in the hospital. Maximum five. <laughs> I love your attitude, Kim. It appears his whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. <laughs> uh, let's look at the controls. There are large rectangular buttons. Monter, the sound, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. Cool. I presume that's down and that's up? Monter is like, get on, up, yeah. Okay. I wonder what this elevator was used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. Uh, let's go up. I mean, it's a freight elevator, right? Lots of buildings that have stairs have... Ooh! Freight elevators. Secret room. Small windows taped shut with black plastic. You can't see outside. We're in a secret room. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. Why are the lights on? Oh, that's Klaja's room. Oh, interesting. Schematics for a pinball machine, futurism themed. Ooh, <gasps> oh, oh, we'll empathy. Nice. We a lot of that, did we? Someone made pinball machines back here. Or we'll fixed them. The pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up a long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. One of my uncles is really into pinball. Ooh. He has a pinball machine in his home. Yeah. Does he play it all the time? The lieutenant looks yeah. around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. Whenever he comes to visit us in Wellington, he like does like a tiki tour of all the best pinball places in town and like oh. plays tries to get a score on the board. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Um, looks like they gave up on fixing the machines at some point. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. I was just about to say the phrase, um, tiki tour. I don't think we use that anymore. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. Um, this used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. 
I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before mm. it became a hostel. There are machines left over. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardies bang away at it. I never noticed the pinball machine downstairs. I didn't either. Can, so we, can we, we go should, play it? Yeah, let's yeah. go see Remember if we can play the it. Dice maker? Then that means... Uh, the Whirling and Rags was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade. Ooh! This is left over from there. Ah, yes. As the novelty dice maker said, this has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. <laughs> but I do like a nice little connection. <laughs> but then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. Um, could this mean the Whirling and Rags really is part of the doomed commercial area? Mm. If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. Okay. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Fair that's fair. Stupid superstition. But still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. Yes. It's not a ghost story. It's a curse. And Gart ought to be made knowledgeable so he could perform counter spells. <laughs> Amazing. We'll finish the thought. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. oh footprints. footprints. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Ooh, someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. You know, officer. The window is broken in the room. This is good. He likes it. There's a little smile there, <laughs> in the dark of the workshop. This isn't bad at all. It was a good idea to see where that door leads. Commendable work bringing us to this place. Yeah. We're good at stuff, slash just really curious about everything. Okay, but what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route, behind Classio's room, in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Let's have a closer look at them. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The souls have left a pattern, uniform. Horizontal lines. What do they mean by soul could be bigger than vamp? I have no idea. One person has been here. They've gone back and forth. The tips point both ways. Let's just work our way through them. The yeah. prints look like one person went back and forth. Between that and that. The barred door. And the elevators, yeah. And the door was barred from the inside, mm -hmm. we established. The print does not look like the odd sold print we found at the hanging. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Yes. Mm. This doesn't look like the workers' boots from the hanging, does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Oh. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still we should, a boot. Though. We should put on our other shoes Everything and see if they compare. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. Put on our what? We've got his shoes. If if they're the same shoes, they might match. Oh, I. Mm. You clearly see. I don't know if it would be. These and like everything else. Here. Large prints. One person has been here. Mm. They've gone back and forth. No, okay. these little horizon. Okay. Everything around you. That's too sensible for the game to figure out. <laughs> There's a uh, tiny hole in the wall. You can see, you see, oh gross, you see a bedroom on the other side. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. Um, I think I can see in Cla into Klaja's bedroom from here. You can oh. barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist Maybe conclusions Maybe Titus was here. watching them. Maybe. I feel like if Titus was the one who was doing it, he would have been weirder about us finding that key. Yes. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. 
What were those people doing in there? You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. Okay. <laughs> Finish the thought. Hello, some by the door, eh? Yeah. This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. <laughs> Let's not punch it because we'll hurt ourselves, but well, what's I mean, on, lightly, oh, lightly punch okay. it. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. We do have health, so. Mm -hmm. Lightly punch it. The door Just... shudders a bit as though it were laughing at you. So, what's on the other side? I mean, we know. Unless that. we veered off into a folded M dimension, I'm expecting <laughs> to stop out on the roof. <laughs> we could ask Class here about this route. See how she reacts. Mm. Folded M dimension. A reference to the popular science fiction series, In System. Look who's in a good mood suddenly and reads science fiction. <laughs> it's good. Yes. It is quite likely that we will re emerge on the M plane. Brace for psychokinetic impact. Or the roof. <laughs> Let's the door. And we want to speak to her anyway, right? Yes. So. We do. Hey, we just popped out of here like fucking creepers. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. I put on some clothes. What are we putting on? What did they? What do people suggest? There was something like well, the there was there was a volition check that they suggested we we not fail. Yes. Um. So let's try that. I'm just um. Empathy. Um. This was more just like a general, general chat situation in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, what's this give us? Drama. Let's stick with that. We love our drama. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Drama, electrochemistry versus empathy and hand-eye coordination. I feel like having electrochemistry when talking to her is probably a good idea, right? Because she's, like, into the drugs. She is, yes. I don't think we have a single item with volition on it. Uh, and Izza can't tell me whether I'm wrong because Izza's looking at something on her phone. So a comments two people have said you need to pass the volition check, not yeah. need need, but, but oh okay, yeah I can't I can't see volition here anywhere, which is really unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure what color it is. Mm. Oh here we go. This ooh this has got one on it, but I don't really want to wear this around her. What is it? It's the um Can we hide it paste? under something else? We could we could put another jacket over the top of it, yeah. Um Oh yeah, that's got volition on it. Um <laughs> It looks so okay, silly. That's everything. That's our new jacket, by the way. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I was wrong. I I missed two things. So here we go. We've got a plus two to volition. Now. Let's do it. Oh, she can see our gloves. Oh, wow. I don't know if this will have any impact at all. If you guys know whether us having the items on around here uh, will have any impact, do tell us so that I can stop being paranoid about it. Hello, officer. What brings you up here again? Oh, it's locked anyway. Um, Titus Hardy gave us a recording where he, the deceased states his intention to commit rape. Well, that's correct, yes. She puts her coffee cup down oh. with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Mm, okay. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Hmm. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, 
Where did they get this recording exactly? That we mm. don't know. That's a good question. It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Ooh, those are the exact words he used. Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. A pickup line. What do you mean Did by he that? say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it co Holly style? Yes. Both of those are mentioned. Which one do you want me to say? Yes, either is fine. Two. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little cohoy. It wasn't his everything. Why did he say things like that matches more? Yes, yeah. was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living. Until they just... Sort of turn into his, um... Persona? That's the word I'm looking for. Hmm. Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. Uh. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. Lely. He was like the Semenes conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezud all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor which he wore in bed and in the shower. What? Um, uh, and you spent time with this person romantically? I kind of want to ask the top one. Okay, when you're afraid. you afraid. Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. What? Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Oh, okay. She wouldn't. She doesn't have the full hoy in her. Okay. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. Mm. That seems to directly counter what he was saying in that recording mm. of like how he was like overdone. So that makes me wonder whether she's right and he just has this whole persona going so much so that it's just kind of like a patter mm. for him. Or whether she has totally misread him as a person. Yes. That's also, yes. There was a small measure of pride in her that she could quell the rage in such a being. Hmm. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. Hmm. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. So now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. Mm. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Mm. Lelystad. That's a good start. I wonder if she'll be able to tell us more about we the tattoos. We have a few questions you can help us with. Mm. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. All right, let's work our way through. Mmm... Where is Lelistad, the place I mean? In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. Okay. Oranje? Oranje's map of waterways? This fits hmm. with his tattoo. Mm hmm. You were almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. Um, you were both from Oranje? Yes. 
We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranien Reik, I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranie. It was bad habits. Hmm. I find it interesting. I don't necessarily object to it, but I do find it interesting that she's speaking with an American accent, hmm. but every time she uses words to describe the place that she's from, it's kind of like a slightly Swedishy kind of accent. Just seems a little bit inconsistent. Ah, oh, I don't necessarily think so, because why do I think that? So I think if you are... Say if we were to learn another language, mm. we're speaking in that other language, and then we're referring to things back home, we might use our native accent to refer to those places. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So she may have, in her life, perfected the accent of... The local area. Wherever they speak with American accents. Yeah. I always find that slightly disorientating. Like, it's it's funny because it's not disorientating for me for people who've grown up in the place where they're speaking the accent. But this isn't this isn't a criticism. It's just, just something that I've observed in myself. Like when you see people who are learning English and they're learning to speak it with an American accent. It always just kind of makes me go, oh, <laughs> like, like not in a you shouldn't do that way, just in a way where it kind of makes my brain go in a kind of like that seems out of place is the wrong word, but kind of like, yeah, it just seems kind of interesting. But oh. I think sometimes when you're you're you are learning an accent, learning a language, you don't realize that you're learning an accent at the same time. Like, I can remember when I was learning Mandarin in high school for all of uh, two terms. Uh, we were learning it, and then our teacher went on holiday for a couple of weeks, and so she got someone else to come in and cover for her. And I didn't know it at the time, but I've seen people describing it since. The person who came in had a different accent to her, and so she was like, no, 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 you're pronouncing it wrong, and was, like, teaching us to pronounce... Things a different way. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so, so your observation is what? Just that you, that, that when you're learning a language, you're learning an accent as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of a funny thing that you don't necessarily think about when you're learning an accent. Mm, language, yeah. Uh, learning a language, yeah, yeah. No love for Mother Aranye. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot? No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. Uh-huh. He was by no means a stupid man. A people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot. You don't seem like much of a patriot yourself? Mm-hmm. There is nothing on Moindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranya did bring us together. In loathing. I love Ravishol, though. I hope she loves me, too. Hmm. How old was he? He was 42. Forty-two, are you sure? I would have had him above fifty. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. The memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Unless he was trying to uh, make you think he was younger. Looks like you were right, officer. <laughs> The lieutenant taps on his notebook once as though assigning some kind of point. <laughs> Points are good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. Okay. Uh, better not to mention it, right? <laughs> the young woman looks at you, then the lieutenant, then you. Uh, she might have observed it anyway. She's clearly sensing something. A spike in testosterone levels, perhaps. Uh, eye colour? Blue. L light blue. They were like 
like little blue galaxies, you know. It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. Does that match with what we heard? Having a soft voice? It certainly could have been harsher mm, in okay. terms of, like, caricatures and stuff. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those Expression. eyes... Expression. <laughs> oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine. Made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Can I see to put brilliantine on the form? Do I get a point? <laughs> so you want to say that? If this gives us a negative. No. <laughs> but I put it down there. Pull a point to the red or top C slip. Okay, sure. <laughs> what else are we missing, officer? You had a tattoo, um, what did it mean? Mm. Oh, that. It's clear she liked it. You liked it? Quite a lot, yes. It was an Arnie's map of the waterways? Sure, waterways. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How so? How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranis lit? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Mm -hmm. Ask. Is this Oranis lit? Yes. This is the very essence of Oranis lit. A moment's respite. Dark and hopeless is the struggle itself. She leans even further back to demonstrate. She's smoking and drinking, of course and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, what was this, baby? She points the air with her sharp, nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo star. And he says, that was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, saw some bat shit there. Killed some loincloths. <sighs> and so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this? Oh, yeah. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She pours herself some coffee. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Oranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people in the Seminine Islands, and on other islands too all of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Mm. Not a very fun story. It is when you're high. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. A change of topic? Could it be lo that love did him in? Remember the dead man talked to us, but except that wasn't him, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm interested that communism is also an option here. Um, but let's start with this. I do want to ask this one as well. Something miraculous is coming, he told me. Mm. Um, but could it be that love did him in? It very well could be, yes. What do you mean? What do I mean? I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? He told me. Love did him in. That's not funny, officer. Oh. She 
Should I ask this first or this? Well, yeah, right. Which one? Uh, I'm just saying, like, she's not, she said it's not funny and then we're going to say again. The same thing straight away? Mm. Uh, communism first? A moment ago it was love. And no, I don't think the union is communist. There are a couple of shades pinker than that. Uh huh. They're not hardcore in that way, is what I'm trying to say. What are we talking about anyway? This politics shit is a lot in the morning. Is it even morning? It is, it is it now. Morning. I think she's just tired. She doesn't know what you meant by that. And can you blame her? I mean, we barely know what we meant by that. Mm. Something miraculous is coming, he told the me. The lieutenant blinks. His expression does not <laughs> Sorry, change. Sorry, Ken. All right, let's see where this is going. From way out in the northwest, he told me. Cool. Ooh. Okay, she's not impressed. I think we're finished with this line of questioning. All right. He puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Okay. Um, we can't do this yet because it's locked. We do no. have six in volition. Let's return to this later. But, ooh, let's see what that is. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? Oh, I bet Harry's the same age. How old are you? Mm -hmm. That's where this is going. 45,000 litres of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Kim, how old do you think I am? Huh? How old do I look? How old? Mm. 58. Um, I don't know what to say. I don't know either because all of them are hilarious in their own way. Beautiful in their own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're wrong. You were wrong about the disease too. He was way younger. Mm -hmm. He was diseased. He had been decomposing for a week. I feel like I've been, deco been decomposing for longer than that. <laughs> yeah. Or the no. ravages of Al Ghul are nearly as extreme as that of death itself, Lieutenant Kutsaragi. Oh, okay, you're right. That, that was a good one. Yes, yes. There's silence. Then a little more. <laughs> Here it comes. Mercy. Oh, no. Sure, you're 42. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Wait. man. This requires scientific measurements. I'm not afraid of the truth. Bring it on. To the laboratorium. What? 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 What laboratorium? I got a thought, a thought gained. Date of birth generator? Your face looks like it's 58 and your body feels like it's 60. Your mind feels like it's lived for one day or a hundred. Both longer than they ought to be the day and the century. But for how long, then, has this thing attached to your sentience warped the planet's crust? T time to start racking these brains of yours, Elder One. When and where were you born? Okay. Love that. Um... We've got three skill points. Do we want to put a point into Volition and talk to her now? Yes. Okay. I'm keen. I'm just going to save it, though. Because I must. Uh, where is Volition? Here. Hold yourself together. Keep your morale up. Volition? Oh, no. Perception's at highest. It's pretty high. Seven. Yeah, we've mm. got we've got items on at the moment. Oh, of course. And thoughts have given us plus two on this, so that's nice. good to know. Okay. I was just thinking. Let's do it. What a nice day for questions, <laughs> pertaining to a murder investigation. Soft, yes. light brown eyes look back at you, directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. Okay. I have bad news for you. What? You know these guys? Who? Me? Yes, you. He's talking about you, you boring stiff. You too. Oh no. Me? What did I do? These guys are compromised. <laughs> She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. 
You can't trust them anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> Believe it. Which ones exactly are affected? There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume. They're all, all compromised? Mm. of them. Bullshit, man. I ain't compromised. Especially that guy. Okay. That guy's yeah. the most compromised one in here. No fucking way, man. I just want a drag of that sweet menthol Ziggy. Really? Quick, tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Glory, truth, <laughs> softness. Protect her. She wants you. She doesn't want us. I take no. it back. He's got it pretty bad. But this next guy's on another level entirely. She hey. likes you. The crown head is a boring condom. He's jealous. This is you in nature. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> How it always does. Through subtlety. What can I do? There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. Can't you turn them normal again? No. What use is this then? It's better to know you're being played than to be played without knowing it, is it not? Does this mean she's been lying to me? Yes. Mr. Thespian here has been singing pians to how truthful she is. She is a lady most fair and just. Mm. In his defense, to reduce him to such inadequacy, she probably had to employ half-truths mm. more often than outright lies. That's okay. been my impression from her from the get-go. It's like right. some of what she's saying is true, but she's also got her own priorities. That is correct. And omissions, too. I trust that guy? A little. They're all still of limited use, interpreting things to the best of their ability. Maybe they add flair or something. I wouldn't know. I don't add flair. <laughs> but when it comes to assessments of character and factual accuracy, they are not to be trusted. Not trust, with her. Can I trust any of them ever again? Don't be melodramatic. You can trust them. Just not with Miss Orange Disco Dancer hair. Okay. A light green speck and imperfection on the outer rim of the ripe <laughs> iris. It sparkles. Okay, thanks, Perception. Appreciate what, that. What is her plan? Um, I feel like I feel like this is an interesting interaction from uh, our perspectives as anthropologists, mm. because part of the training, I guess, uh, that is studying to be an anthropologist is to understand that you are always biased yes, and you are always filtering things through your personal lens and your cultural lens and your emotional lens. Mm -hmm. And you can try and disestablish some of that, but in the end, you just have to accept that your perception is biased, is biased mm -hmm. and, and, and just kind of be comfortable with that as try and identify it as much as possible, right? Yeah. And like just acknowledge it whenever you're writing about stuff or talking about stuff and just saying, you know, this is coming from my lens. And this is what my lens is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What's her plan? You can't draw a sound conclusion. The one he usually does says she may want to control the information rollout, not to become a suspect. She may have a past she's escaping. Unrelated to this case, you doubt it's something truly insidious. I think all of that information is incorrect. See? It's oddly moderate. Probably compromised. <laughs> okay, I've been talking to myself long enough. Let's get back to it. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You've got this. Ooh, do you want to confront her? Yeah. Say it out loud. Mercy, are you manipulating me? The silence broken. She exhales a little cloud of smoke. And says, God, no. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's return to this later. Okay. I suspect, I suspect even she might not know that she, like, if she is manipulating us, she may just be doing it instinctually rather than, I'm going to lie to this cop. Yeah, or, or being like, there are things that are unrelated that I don't need to I talk about. I don't need about. to share. Yeah. yeah, it's my business. Right, Shall well, we stop there? Yeah, that's a good place to leave it, I think. I feel like we've learned a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we still need to sort this out. 
Um, <laughs> we have to talk to Gart and explain to him that he's doomed. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of progress and, and still don't know the secret of who it was that was looking through the window. No. Even though we could find that out if we just fucking compared our shoes. Anyway. Well, that's assuming that is the same person. Yes. Oh, look, we've got oh, more. Hang on. What shoes did you put on? I put on the shoes that were the dead guy's shoes. So if it was his footprints, we should have been able to compare them. Yes. Sorry, I don't think they would be his footprints. Talk me through why you think they would be. Well, I'm just saying he's one of the potential people uh, who I might see, have been see, wanting see, to see. spy on him. You were wanting to rule them out. Um, who do you think it is? Well, because we think it was maybe someone watching the dead guy and her fuck. Yeah. So the highest susp suspicious there is that it was probably Titus, right? Except I agree with you when you said he would have been more worried about the key. Mm. Mm. But yeah, yeah. Who, who else has the motivation to do it? I don't know. I mean, anybody who was just wanting to watch some... Well, I don't know, uh, yeah, it's just some, some lurid bit... behaviour. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, yes. The point is that it could be anyone, right? Uh, but I would have liked to have ruled out the creeper because... The creeper. The, um, the guy. guy. Simply because of the, the rape ac accusation. Um, so, so he might have broken into her room by going back through there and, and, and around. Current, current running theory is that it could be our missing person. Our missing hardy boy. I thought she was the missing hardy boy. No. I don't think so. What do we know about the missing Hardy boy? I don't think she was there when she strung when they strung him up. She wasn't there. She just watched. You're absolutely right. She's not the. Odd, she watched from up here. She's she said that. She's not the odd soul. Okay, I had I had conflated these two people in my mind. Right. We think it's the odd soul wearing not odd soul shoes. That could be from what Kim said that they were in roughly the same size. So it doesn't have to be them, but it could be them who was f fucking around in the back room. We should talk to the, s the not the smoker on the balcony, but the um, the smoking driver again. Uh, uh -huh. Because he was the one who talked to us about the lady driver, mm -hmm. not to be confused with the pale driver, mm -hmm. and we haven't found that person yet. No, we haven't. For some reason I had squished her together with the lady driver and ah. I was like cool we've sorted that part of the puzzle but we haven't you're absolutely right okay cool cool all right friends um enjoy your afternoon yes as is off to do dutiful things not dutiful things fun things get my hair done oh that's not what I thought you were doing <laughs> <laughs> this is off to get her hair done. <laughs> um, I'm going to get my hair done. As you do. And um, I'm going to play with my cat in the sunshine. Look how many morale points we've got. I know, right? Fuck, that's great. I think we got that upgrade from our thought. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Friends, go enjoy. And we will catch you next time. See you then. Bye.